hello. I was just having a sort out in the story cabin. Have you come along for a story? Excellent. Let me put that down. Now, we're going to need, uh, yes, as usual, a story waistcoat. I've told you before, I'm sure, you don't need a waistcoat to tell a story. But I rather like them. There we go. And a trusty story stick. Now, our story today comes from a place far, far away. In fact, it is so far away, it's on the other side of your imagination. And it's a place called Monster City. There once was, in Monster City, the fastest monster anyone had ever seen. His name was Speedy McBeady, and he was very tall and very slim. He had bright blue fur, one big eye, and he was so fast that wherever he went, he would pick up a foot, put it down and go, Vroom! Just like a car zooming by, he made the same kind of sound. Now, Speedy McBeady was not only the fastest monster that anyone had ever known, but he also liked to make sure that everybody else knew about this. As often as ten times a day, he would go, Oh, my name's Speedy McBeady and I'm the fastest monster in the whole of Monster City. Have you heard? My name's Speedy McBeady and I... Yes, Speedy McBeady, the other monsters would say, you're the fastest monster in the whole of Monster City. Well, on the day of our story, Speedy McBeady was boasting again and it was really getting on everyone's nerves. In fact, it got on their nerves to the point where another monster said, I'm going to challenge you to a race. Now, this monster's name was Slow Joe Nogo, and he was a great, big, brown, hairy monster, and he carried his house around with him on his back, and everywhere he went, he went like this. Bottom, 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 bottom. Speedy McBeady looked at him and laughed and went, You're never going to beat me. I'm Speedy McBeady. Everywhere I go, I pick up a foot and put it down and go. Well, you know how he goes, don't you? Vroom! And you just carry your house on your back going bump de bump de bump Nevertheless, said Slow Joe Nogo, I challenge you to a race. Well, word of this spread far and wide as quick as quick could be. And before the end of the day, every monster in Monster City knew about the race. The decision was taken that the race would be held on a great road that ran out of the north gate of Monster City, all the way round in a great loop and in the south gate. A road so long that it would take you or I oh, half or, or even a full day to walk it. The race was set for sunrise the very next morning. When sun rose on the day of the race, all of the monsters of Monster City had gathered round to watch the start. There was Speedy McBeady ready to run and Slow Joe No-Go. And the mayor of Monster City picked up a handkerchief in one of his eight arms and threw it in the air. And the moment it hit the floor, the race was on. Speedy McBeady picked up one foot, put it down and he went, well, you know this by now, don't you? He went, Vroom! and Slow Joe Nogo, bent down, picked up his house and headed off. Now, Speedy McBeady was running so fast that within 15 minutes, he was halfway round the road already. But let me tell you, my friends, 
halfway along this road, there was an old oak tree. And underneath the old oak tree, there was a big bumbleberry bush. And on the bumbleberry bush, there was a bumper crop of bumbleberries. Now, bumbleberries grow whenever somebody makes a mistake or a bumble. And if you or I were to eat them, we'd get a really bad tummy ache. They'd make your stomach really hurt. But monsters love them. Speedy McBeady was running past when he saw the bumbleberry bush. He came to a halt. He turned himself round. He looked at the bumbleberry bush and he went, oh, maybe I'll just have one bumbleberry. Maybe I'll have another. Maybe I'll have a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, eighth, ninth, nom, 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 nom. He kept eating and eating and eating until his tummy stuck out like this and every single bumbleberry from the bumbleberry bush was gone. Then he went, oh, no. I could just do with a little bit of a nap. And he sat himself down with his back against that oak tree and he fell fast asleep. He only meant to sleep for a few moments. But he slept for one hour, two, three, four. After four hours, who should come by but Slow Joe No-Go, carrying his house on his back. And he just kept walking and still Speedy McBeady slept. In fact, he slept until late in the afternoon when the sun starting to go down made him chilly. And then he woke up. <coughs> oh no! He shaded his one big eye like this and looked into the distance and he could see Slow Joe Nogo many miles ahead of him, not far off from winning the race. Speedy McBeady picked up one foot, put it down, and he went. He ran so fast that all his fur streaked out behind him. He ran so fast his one big eye began to water. He ran so fast there was a bang, and the sound of his footsteps started appearing further behind him. For those of you with a scientific bent of mind, and Speedy McBeady got closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to Slow Joe No-Go. And he was just about to catch him when... Boom, boom. Slow Joe No-Go put his foot over the finishing line. All the monsters in Monster City went wild. Hooray, they cried. Slow Joe No-Go has won the race. Now, from that day on, my friends, Slow Joe No-Go became one of the most famous monsters in Monster City. And Speedy McBeady, well, if ever he felt tempted to start boasting about being the fastest, in mon fastest monster in Monster City, all anyone had to say was, <coughs> Slow Joe No-Go. And he'd go, oh yes, well, he did beat me that one time, but it wasn't really fair, it was my fault really. And that, my friends, is the story of Speedy McBeady and Slow Joe No-Go. 
And some of you, some of you, some of you may think it bears a striking resemblance to a certain story about a hare and a tortoise by a gentleman from a long time ago called Aesop. But I think all stories are improved if you include a monster or two. Thank you so much for coming along to the Story Cavern for another story. Join us on another day. There will be another tale, I am absolutely sure. Take care now. Bye-bye.